In my last tutorial, I demonstrated some methods for shooting a custom projectile in a straight line. I'd like to expand upon that and create a projectile that has gravity, like Anna's biotic grenade or Tracer's pulse bomb. This time, instead of a hacking projectile, I'll create a projectile that explodes and deals damage in free-for-all. If you're looking for something specific, here's a list of time codes of things I'll be covering in this video. These time codes are available in the description as well if you're watching on mobile. The way that we can achieve a parabolic path for our projectile is to have a variable for the vertical position and another for the horizontal position. Again, we'll start by setting up our variable initialization so the game knows where our projectile is going to be. First, I'll name all the variables I'll need. I'll need projectile vertical, projectile horizontal, projectile speed, target position, projectile direction, and cooldown. Now I know that's a lot all up front, but we'll go through each of these one by one as we go. Now let's create the variable initialization rule for when each player joins. To start, we'll go ahead and set their projectile speed to 1. We'll also set projectile vert to negative 50 to start our projectile outside of bounds. We'll set projectile horizontal to a position of 0, 0, 0, and we'll create the effect that represents the projectile. For the effect position, we'll use a vector, and we'll plug in the x and z coordinates of the horizontal variable, and then for our y coordinate, we'll use the vertical variable. So for the x coordinate, we can just use x component of the horizontal variable, and then for our y, we'll just use the vertical. And then for our z, just use z component of that horizontal variable again. And once again, I'm just going to disable the primary fire since we're using primary fire to fire the projectile. So let's start with the vertical motion. I'll make a new rule called projectile up for each player. As I said, the projectile will fire when the player presses primary fire. And just as it did last time, our projectile position will start at the I position of the player. However, remember the vertical variable is only our up and down direction. So we'll just select the Y component of the I position of the event player. Then we'll set the speed of the projectile. We'll start with a flat uh, 25. Then we'll add a small weight, and this will allow the variables to be set before we start chasing them. So then we'll start chasing our projectile speed down to zero. And if you have any basic experience with physics, then I'm sure you know that the acceleration of gravity on Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. However, I don't believe that this chase rate is in meters per second, but I've found that uh, around 25 is a, is a decent number for uh, gravity rate and for this since the rate is going to be constant and it's we're just chasing to zero we don't want to reevaluate this chase and then at the same time we want to chase our vertical projectile position all the way up to 500 at the rate of the projectile speed and since the projectile speed is going to be changing, we'll leave the reevaluation on destination and rate. The reason we use 500 is because that's a really high number up in the sky, and it'll just keep going up that way until the speed reaches zero. Now let's make a new rule for the projectile's downward motion. Our condition will look for when the projectile speed reaches zero. At this point, all we have to do is chase our speed up to something like 500 at that same rate and again we can turn off the reevaluation and then chase our vertical position down to negative 500 at the speed rate. The projectile now fires straight up and falls right back down. The reason it spawns over there is because we haven't set the horizontal coordinates for it yet. 
Now, this works fine, but it ascends to the same height every time, regardless of the angle that I'm looking at. Let's fix that. Now, this isn't totally necessary, so if you're intimidated by graphs, feel free to skip this part. Now, instead of a flat 25 for our projectile speed, let's make it scale off the player's current vertical facing angle. And for this, keep in mind that the angle that someone is facing goes down as they look up and up as they look down. The way I'm going to do this is to use a slope equation. At negative 90 degrees, I want the speed to be at 20. At zero degrees, I want the speed to be at 10. If I plug that into a slope calculator because I'm lazy, I get the slope of y equals negative 1 over 9 times x plus 10, where x is the vertical facing angle. So to get that equation in here, I'll just do an add 10 to the product of our vertical facing angle and negative 1 over 9. Now my projectile will reach a different height based on where I'm looking. Now let's add the horizontal motion. When we fire the projectile, we'll set three more of our variables. We'll set the projectile direction to the direction that the player is facing. We'll set the target position to a position 500 meters away from where the player is currently looking and we'll set the horizontal position to where the player is currently at. And now we can add a chase for the horizontal position, which will chase to the target position that we just defined at a rate of 15. So now our projectile has horizontal motion but again, moves the same speed every time regardless of how high we're looking. Once again, this is optional, but I can use another slope equation similar to the last one for our rate of horizontal motion. So I will add 15 to the vertical facing angle of the player times negative one over nine. And now our projectile's distance will change depending on what angle we look now let's program the projectile to explode. For this particular projectile, I'm going to test for collision in two dimensions. This can be done in one or condition, but it would get pretty long and kind of scary to look at, so I'll split it into two separate rules with identical actions. So first, I'll check for collision below the projectile. For this, I'll be checking the distance from the projectile itself to the ray cast hit position beneath it. So remember that the position of the projectile is composed of the x component of the horizontal variable, the vertical variable, and the z component of the horizontal variable. And then we'll have to specify that position once more here for the start position of the ray cast, horizontal vertical, horizontal, and then our end position for this can just be 0, negative 500, 0, because no matter where you are at on the map, negative 500 is going to create a very sharp downward direction. We can include all players, since this is free for all, and the distance that we will check for is about 0.5. For our actions, we can stop chasing our projectile speed, our vertical, and our horizontal positions. We can also play the explosion effects at the position of the projectile. And damage any player within the radius. And to make sure it doesn't damage the event player, I'm going to use remove from array, and we're going to be removing event player from players within radius with our projectile's position as the center. And 
And I'll make the radius, oh, how about six? And I'm going to turn on surfaces and barriers so that the explosion doesn't kill people through walls or shields. We'll set the damager to event player and I'll make the amount 200. It's going to deal a lot of damage. And now we'll add a quarter second wait to let the effect play and any damage to come through. And all we have to do to hide our projectile is set the vertical position to negative 50 to put it back below the map. So for the sideways collision, I'll just copy and paste that. And I'll come into here. And instead of our end position on the ray cast to be negative 500, we'll add the position of the projectile. with that variable that we saved with the projectile direction. So this will make the ray cast out from the projectile in the direction that the player was facing at that time. And that's all we need to change with that. The last thing I'll do is add the cooldown, same as last time. So now we have a working projectile with gravity. It will detonate when it hits a wall, a floor, or another player. You chose your side. Now, of course, you are free to experiment with the numbers so you can create a parabola you feel best fits your game mode. Maybe instead of scaling the speed of your projectile from your view angle, Maybe you could create a rule that charges up a variable while holding primary fire, and upon letting go, the speed scales off of that charge variable, sort of like Hanzo drawing back his bow. Now, this is definitely one of the most complicated tutorials I've made so far, so as usual, don't hesitate to comment if you're running into any problems. I'll do my best to help you out. Remember to check out my workshop tutorials playlist if you see anything else you'd like to learn about and join my Discord for easy access to my game modes, updates, and other workshop players and creators. Thanks for watching.